Once again, welcome to First Year Undergraduate Microeconomics. We're continuing our topic of welfare economics. We're measuring gains from trade, and we're concentrating on the gains from trade to the buyer, which is the benefit the buyer gets from the product, less the amount the buyer pays. We've been looking at Sarah and Sarah's marginal values, which are given here. If you haven't seen them before, go back to the previous presentations. In the last presentation, we worked out Sarah's consumer surplus if she buys three apples at 90 cents per apple, and we noted that was her total value of 420, less the amount she pays, which three times 90, $2.70, which gives us $1.50 consumer surplus to Sarah from buying the three apples. And we saw last time how we could use Sarah's marginal value curve for apples to work out that consumer surplus. Now, that's all very well, but we actually don't know Sarah's marginal value curve. We haven't come across that before. What we have come across before is Sarah's demand curve for apples. Now, remember that a demand curve answers the question, given the price, how many apples would Sarah like to buy? Well, let's try and work out Sarah's demand curve and put it on the same diagram as her marginal value curve. We can do that because we've got the quantity of apples down here, and we've got dollars on the vertical axis, so we can always call those dollars the price. So we can put Sarah's demand curve on the same set of axes. Let's see how we do it. Let's start asking our demand curve questions. So... Let's start off with a price of 2.10 per apple and ask how many apples Sarah would like to buy given that price of apples at 2.10 per apple. So now we've still got Sarah's marginal value curve here as drawn before, but now we've put the price up here at $2.10 per apple. Now how many apples would Sarah like to buy at $2.10 per apple? Well, remember that Sarah's marginal valuation of her first apple was only $2. In other words, we said that we could give Sarah $2, or we could give her one apple, and she would be indifferent. Or another way of saying that is, the maximum amount that Sarah would pay for that first apple was her marginal value of $2. So how many apples will Sarah buy at a price of $2.10? Well, she won't buy any apples. She won't buy any apples because Sarah only values the first apple at $2. She's not going to pay $2.10 for it. We know that from her marginal value. So we can draw a point here on Sarah's demand curve. In fact, we can go further than that. We know that for every price above $2, Sarah's not going to buy any apples. She only is willing to pay at most $2 for a first apple. So she's not going to pay $2.05, $2.10, $4, $8. We don't care. Any price above $2, Sarah will buy no apples. So we know that Sarah's demand curve is this vertical yellow line here, at least above the price of two apples. OK, so we've got Sarah's demand curve when the price of apples is above $2 per apple. What about if the price of apples is exactly $2 per apple? How many apples will Sarah buy then? Well, now we've put the price at exactly $2. So this dotted blue line here is the price that Sarah faces. And I've also just put on the demand curve that we know so far. That Sarah's demand curve, as long as the price is greater than $2. But what if the price is exactly $2? We know that if the price is exactly $2, Sarah doesn't care if she's got $2 or she has that first apple. She definitely won't buy a second apple. Her marginal value of a second apple is only $1.20. But at a price of $2, she's just indifferent between buying one apple and not buying the apple. OK, that sounds a bit hard. Let's pick a different price and try and come back to this. Let's pick a price of, say, $1.50. So how many apples will Sarah buy or would she like to buy at a price of $1.50 per apple? So now we've got the price of $1.50 on these axes, that's the blue dotted line there. And I've also just put the bit of demand curve that we know for prices above $2. Now the question is, how many apples would Sarah like to buy at $1.50?
Well, let's imagine she goes into the shop, and the shopkeeper says, Sarah, I'll sell you a first apple for $1.50. Yes or no? Well, Sarah's going to answer yes. Remember, she's indifferent between the first apple and $2. She values that first apple at $2, or her maximum amount she would be willing to pay for the first apple is $2. That's what the marginal value curve tells us. So a dollar fifty, well, that's a bargain for Sarah for the first apple. She'd be willing to pay two dollars. She only has to pay a dollar fifty. So Sarah's definitely going to buy that first apple. So we know that Sarah's demand for apples at a price of a dollar fifty is at least one apple. Okay, let's imagine Sarah hands over the dollar fifty, gets given the first apple, and the shopkeeper says, "Hey, Sarah, wanna buy another apple at a dollar fifty? What will Sarah say? Well, remember that Sarah's value of her second apple, given that she's already got one apple, her marginal value of the second apple is only a dollar twenty. She has to pay a dollar fifty to buy that ac- uh, second apple. Will she do it? No. She's only willing to pay a dollar twenty for that second apple. If the storekeeper's asking a dollar fifty because that's the price, she's not going to buy the second apple. So we know that at a price of a dollar fifty, Sarah will want to buy the first apple, but only the first apple. So given the price, Sarah would like to buy one apple at a price of a dollar fifty. Well, what about a price of a dollar sixty? Same thing holds. She'd be willing to buy the first apple because a dollar sixty is less than two dollars, her marginal value of the first apple, but she wouldn't be willing to buy the second apple because the marginal value of the second apple, given she's bought one apple, is only a dollar twenty. So we know at a price of a dollar sixty, Sarah would be willing to buy just one apple. What about a price of a dollar ninety? Well, same story. At a price of a dollar ninety, it's less than two dollars, so Sarah would buy the first apple, but she certainly won't buy the second apple. A dollar ninety is more than her marginal value of a second apple, which is a dollar twenty. So in fact, This story works for every price between $2 all the way down to $1.20. If the price of an apple is $1.25, she will only buy one apple. She will not buy the second apple because $1.25 is more than her willingness to pay. It's more than she values that second apple. She only values it at $1.20. So we've now drawn a second bit of Sarah's demand curve. The first bit was the demand curve for a price above $2. We've now got Sarah's demand curve for a price between $1.20 and $2. What about at $2? Well, at $2, remember, she was indifferent. And so we'll just draw her demand curve there to represent this indifference by a horizontal line. So we now have, by the yellow line here, Sarah's demand for apples, her demand curve, when the price is greater than $1.20. Okay, let's pick another price. What about the price of $1.20 per apple? How many apples will Sarah like to buy? Hmm, this is another case of an indifference. Remember that Sarah's marginal value of her second apple was exactly $1.20, and the price now is exactly $1.20. So if the price of apples is $1.20, she will definitely buy the first apple, but she will be indifferent between buying the second apple. Given she's got the first apple, the maximum she would be willing to pay is $1.20 for that second apple. Fortunately, we know how to handle that now. We've already seen one of these cases, and we can represent Sarah's demand curve by the horizontal line between the first apple and the second apple at a price of $1.20. That represents her indifference. It should be becoming obvious that the demand curve is tracking exactly on top of the marginal value curve. But let's check another price. What about if apples are 90 cents per apple? How many apples would Sarah like to buy? Now I've drawn on the bit of the demand curve that we know for Sarah. But now we have a price of 90 cents down here. Here's our price line. How many apples would she like to buy? Well, given a price of $0.90, cents, she'll definitely buy the first apple. She's willing to pay up to $2 for the first apple, so she'll definitely buy one apple. 
Given she's bought the first apple at a price of 90 cents, she will buy a second apple. Why? Well, her willingness to pay or her marginal valuation of that second apple is $1.20. That's the most she would be willing to pay for the second apple, given she's got the first apple. But the price of 90 cents is less than $1.20, so she will be willing to buy that second apple. What about the third apple? Well, again, notice that Sarah's marginal value of the third apple was a dollar. That's above 90 cents. Given she's bought two apples, she'd be willing to buy the third apple. She'd be willing to pay up to a dollar to get that third apple. She only has to pay 90 cents, so she will buy the third apple. What about a fourth apple? The answer is now no, she won't buy a fourth apple. Her willingness to pay or her marginal valuation of that fourth apple is only 70 cents. She's not going to pay 90 cents for it. So we have another point on Sarah's demand curve. And in fact, you can check the prices in between as much as you like. You'll find that the demand curve tracks the marginal value curve. So what's our conclusion here? Well, what is Sarah's marginal value curve? For any price, Sarah's marginal value curve tells us how many apples she would like to buy given the price. But that's just the definition of a demand curve. So by definition, Sarah's marginal value curve is her demand curve. They're the same thing. So here we've got Sarah's marginal value curve and here we've got Sarah's demand curve. They are the same thing. For any price, this curve tells us how many apples Sarah would like to buy and for any quantity, the demand curve, the height of the demand curve, tells us Sarah's marginal valuation for that quantity of apples. So the demand curve and the marginal value curve are the same curves. Now that's really, really useful because we needed the marginal value curve to get Sarah's gains from trade. But if the marginal value curve is just the demand curve, we just need her demand curve to get Sarah's gains from trade or her consumer surplus. And we'll see how to do that in the next presentation.